sometimes a brittle sheet of plastic material such as this light diffuser that the electrician gave me needs to be cut down to a smaller size in this video i'll show you and explain how this is done without shattering a brittle sheet of plastic into either multiple pieces or ending up with an ugly jagged edge that cuts hands and is unsightly so you can see i'm done with my first cut and it's pretty nice and straight and even etc so no issues no shattering no chipping key to this cut is uh, having a saw blade it doesn't need to be mounted on a table saw i do it on a table saw here but it has to have a saw teeth that is not too coarse that's a fine enough saw teeth on the blade important thing number two is that the blade here on the table saw is set to maximum depth of cut the reason for this is that the rotating saw blade here hits the material as close to vertically as possible the force along the saw teeth is perpendicular to the radius so here at the 12 o'clock position is horizontal so as close to the three o'clock position as possible i try to raise the saw blade up because at the three o'clock position the force exerted on the material being cut is exactly vertical so right here it's not exactly at the three o'clock position it's at the i don't know two o'clock position something like that but it but so the saw blade is raised to a height to hit the material as close to possible as vertical instead of just the saw blade barely extending through the surface of the table in this case and resulting in pushing the material in this direction or close to or maybe maybe a little bit down i hope these four spectres make sense so i use a table saw a big one where i can lay the material out and i bend the material as it's being cut i bend it against the fence so it doesn't run so its corner doesn't run under the fence or whatever it stays parallel with the fence and moves forward in this manner so i'm going to cut this sheet without any much further explanation i'm just going to put my gear on front As you saw it it needs a nice and even feed rate as well as once i was done with the cut i reached over to the fence moved it out that way and pulled the material sideways away from the slowing down or spinning uh, saw blade so uh, as it slows down a slower pace of the saw blade a so slower rotation will also likely to grab the material and chip the material at one point no chipping on the even on the waist side as well and before the saw blade fully stopped i also pulled the material away from the saw blade so it doesn't grab it and doesn't throw it and doesn't chip it so that's what's involved it needs a little bit of setup and thought and uh, practice of course and one last item to point out is that the two sides of this particular material are dissimilar one side is smooth and the other side is textured or dimply this is where you can see the plastic ridges and it was cut in a way that the saw blade the rotating saw blade was starting the cut up top at the solid surface and finishing the cut or finishing the chip formation on the dimply side so should any cracking start at the top 
the possible cracks that form or chips that form, they are all hidden if there are any. They could be hidden between the zigs and zags of the material here. If it were cut the other way around, possible scalloping here at the, at the edge of the material might occur towards the smooth side and I wanted to avoid that. So that's why it was cut in this case with the textured surface facing the table so that this possible surface scalloping which is through the thickness of the material and only along the edge and really there aren't any maybe maybe on the offcut side i turned it upside down but i really can't see any but should any occur the scalloping would be affecting on the side with the rotation of the saw blade on the side that's uh, down and and the scalloping would be hidden between these surface dimples but there aren't any here so this one is cut well